Well, hey, Jeremy, it's great to catch up with you and talk a little bit about our innovation pipeline. You know, over the past year, you've transitioned into your role. What stood out to you about the ways in which we're unlocking value for growers? You come from leadership roles overseeing the development of new traits and chemistry products, and now we're measuring the benefits of their use. It's, it's got to be cool to see both sides of it. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it really is cool. You know, it's pretty remarkable to see how all the data that we gather both from our customers and then also our internal data allows us to make our products more transparent in terms of the value they provide. You know, it also helps us in terms of positioning the products and so we can provide more value to growers. And then ultimately, even the way we develop and, and, and advance these products, I think will be informed by that data. So it really has been a pretty remarkable experience for me being able to see how we can bring all this data together with the physical products and actually provide better system recommendations to growers. You know, for, for you, I've got a related question. You know, we've, we've talked a lot about field view, seed advisor, you know, that's been advancing. We've got other initiatives like trial advisor or seed, or seed showcase that are coming online. You know, from your perspective, what is it that enables us to advance this kind of technology and capabilities for our customers? Well, I, I think the key to that question, Jeremy, is it's all about the data, um, just, as, just as you mentioned. What really drives things like Seed Advisor, Trial Advisor, and Seed Showcase are the ability to access very various elements of data. And, and data truly is an asset. Um, whether it's coming from our breeding um, pipeline or whether it's coming from our customers, the real power is when we bring the two together and unlock that to create insights that our customers may not be able to realize on their own. And finally, you know, what these programs allow us to do is not only bring our recommendation, but also pair that recommendation based upon what they're trying to achieve on their own farm. So it's not just a generic recommendation, it's actually tailored to the specific situation that that farmer's trying to achieve. So that, that's pretty interesting. And, and you know, the examples I, I talked about were sort of seed examples, but what's your thinking on crop protection? Where do you see the biggest value for growers there? Is it the same everywhere or is it going to be uh, tailored as we like to say? Well, I think there's some fundamental things that are the same all over the world and that really resolves around the customer. I mean, the farmers trying to protect their investment in that seed product and realize the best or most profitable yield they can. Where modeling comes into this is it's one element to be able to predict whether or not a disease may be a serious threat to that crop or when, or you know when they should maybe spray or take some sort of action against the disease. But the other important part of that is it really a profitable decision? Right. Because even though you may make an application and it controls the disease, maybe that wouldn't have been the best economic decision. And where we're focused on is really trying to hit the balance of both where and when to spray, but also is this the right financial decision for our customer? So speaking of things that generate data and that generate value, I wanted to talk a little bit about carbon. Yeah. What's been your observation about the carbon program and how it's scaled and are folks really interested in it? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really, I think, exciting how this effort is advancing, not just in North America, but, you know, Brazil and, and now starting in, in, in Europe. You know, the carbon program is, in my view, the sort of leading edge of what will be just general sustainable farming practices, right? Where society is demanding that we uh, decarbonize, that we uh, not only drive more productivity and profitability for growers, but also think about how the work we do in agriculture benefits uh, the broader ecosystem. And so it, it is an exciting opportunity uh, that's sort of captured by the carbon program, driving sustainability while at the same time creating business opportunities, both for our customers, for growers, uh, but also for us at, as a company, you know, and, and we are all in, you know, we have, for example, uh, 10 year sustainability trials, uh, climate research trials that will help us understand what are some of the practices that are really effective practical, implementable at scale that can help farmers not only improve the sustainability of their operations, but have this be something they can do profitably. So really exciting, 
early days, but really a lot of momentum in terms of what's been done both in, in the Americas and now expanding around the world. Yeah, it, it's awesome to see that space really evolve from just ag input focused and now being more holistic in bringing in the sustainability element as well. So, so Jeremy, final word, this is the annual pipeline update and it's never complete um, view of the work from the previous year, but I, I think it sets the stage for the year to come. What excites you about the climate research areas in 2022? Yeah, I mean, there, there are really a, a couple of things. I, I tend to bucket these in, in three areas. The first is, you know, how we advance our field view platform to drive additional franchise value, right? By providing that, that transparency we talked about in how our products are used and how they can be better positioned. The other one is the work we do to drive uh, new business models to allow us to participate in, in additional value pools, some of which are beyond the farm. And carbon is an example where we will be participating in additional value that's created because we are producing, for example, lower carbon ethanol, lower carbon biofuels that can be a sold at a premium that benefit farmers, but also provide societal benefits. Uh, but then the third one that's, I think, a, an exciting new area of focus for us a, as an organization is how we will be driving digital platforms. So people are familiar with FieldView, but uh, we also recently announced a really exciting collaboration with Microsoft. And this allows us not only to further scale uh, our FieldView platform, making it more valuable and more robust, but it also allows us to take our agronomic experience, our data science, combine it with Microsoft's cloud engineering expertise, and now make these capabilities available to a broader collection of stakeholders, folks in the food industry, other companies trying to advance agricultural sustainability. So these three things, driving franchise value, supporting uh, new, value pool, new value pools, new business opportunities, and the opportunities from digital platforms are some of the things that I'm super excited about the word driving is an organization. So same question for you. What are you excited about? If you think about it, you step back and look at all the work we're, we're doing. What is it that really excites you about what, what's yet to come uh, from the pipeline? Well, I mean, there's no question when we talk about things like seed placement, crop protection, carbon, all of those are, are fantastic initiatives. But I think the real shift that I see that's super exciting and I'm looking forward to this next year is our teams are really partnering in new ways. And now, earlier than ever in this digital environment, we're able to ensure we have a good view on what the end product needs to look like and how our research and data science initiatives really need to take shape um, downstream and put it in a place where we can deliver new value to the farmer. And this is happening faster and more efficiently than I've ever seen before. And so whenever you can put the customer at the center and really understand what their needs are and have that influence your product development pipeline, I mean, what a, what a great place to be. Absolutely. Well, Jeremy, thanks for taking some time and sharing your thoughts on our overall pipeline. You know, the innovation is incredible, um, but it's really the people that make it go. So really appreciate hearing your perspective. Likewise, great to connect with you and, and hear how you see science advancing all the important things we're doing. So looking forward to a great year ahead of us.